Good morning and welcome to another edition of Carpod Church on a very beautiful, calm and still morning. It is a far cry from the last time that we met together uh, in, car in my car uh, as we had the winter facing into us a week or so before Christmas. The night was cold, it was dark, uh, the weather was pretty awful. So it's lovely to be back and it's lovely to be back in the sunshine and the emerging sunshine uh, uh, and stillness of this day. It's a very beautiful time of the year. There's new life, there's new growth, there's even a bit of new hope, although of course we have a long way to go yet. Uh, so as you know, Carpod Church has been a, a, a really a, an opportunity to reflect on what it means to be church in a very different time. And over the last few months, we've been looking at the whole uh, emergence of the church, the new church uh, in Jerusalem, as the disciples and the apostles uh, grew from a small, frightened band of people into a large community, literally of thousands. And this was within weeks. Uh, and they, um, we, we watched their journey as they emerged into what we call now the church. But I want us now, for the next few weeks, to go back even further as we study what it means to be church. I want us to go right back to one of the earlier books of the Bible, uh, to the book of Ruth. It's a fascinating story. Some of you will be familiar with it, but it's a story that captures so much of what it means to be community and what it means to be a family of God. Uh, and to help us on our reflections, I'm going to use a very simple aid. Uh, it's a sandal, and it plays an important part in this story, which we'll see in a few weeks' time. Uh, actually, it's getting a wee bit smelly, so I'm going to put it back down, if you don't mind. Uh, uh, but that sandal is, is, is going to be a recurring theme uh, through uh, these coming weeks. Now, the book of Ruth actually starts in a very familiar place for us. It starts in Bethlehem. Uh, it starts in the town where many, many, many years later uh, Jesus uh, was born. Uh, but Bethlehem was also the birthplace of a man called Elimelech. And Elimelech uh, was uh, of the tribe of Judah. He was uh, of the tribe of Benjamin. He was a very um, uh, good man, a very kind man. But the, he was living during a time of great famine. There was a lot of hardship in the land. Uh, and he, he and his wife, Naomi, and their two sons decided, you know what, we can't really make a go of it here. We've got to move. We've got to find uh, sanctuary and safety somewhere. We've got to find somewhere where we can feed ourselves or we're going to starve and die. Uh, and one of the remarkable things about this story is where they ended up going. They went to uh, Moab. Now, Moab uh, was uh, a tribe that had come from uh, Jacob's brother Esau, uh, but Moab was actually an arch enemy uh, of the tribe of Judah and the tribe of Israel, uh, the kingdoms of that time. So uh, it was quite a remarkable thing to travel to a land that you were practically at war with. But such was their desperation and such was their need that they had to do it. They had to go and try and survive. And, and I'm just very conscious as we think about this sandal and, and this journey that there are literally millions of people of all ages, many children, many elderly people traveling this world by foot at this moment. Some of them are escaping from war we think of the horrendous situation that's going on in Yemen uh, and in Syria. Some of them are uh, escaping from sub-Saharan Africa where there's huge famine and drought and there's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of political and, and uh, tensions. Uh, some of them are, are fleeing up to South America uh, because of financial hardships and uh, because of the struggles that they're facing. So there are literally millions of people moving at this moment on foot with all their very few belongings carried on their shoulder with their children and their grandparents with them. Families are just trying to make a go of this. We're very familiar of the, uh, the seas in the Mediterranean where uh, there's been such hardship and such loss of life as people try to flee and try to find a new life. And this is what has been happening for Elimelech. He is trying to find a new life, to make a new start so that he can feed and provide for his children. What sort of welcome does he get in Moab? What sort of welcome do we give to those who travel to be here? These are questions we need to explore in our next edition of Carpod Church. Thank you.